Listen, I'm just believing that God will speak to all of us this morning like never before. Anybody believing with me? And God will talk to you like never before this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Happy New Year. Good to see you. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming to church. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and we give you the glory this morning. We thank you for all that you have done these 21 days. We bless you and we honor you tonight, this morning. Have your way. Minister. Bring deliverance. Restoration. Turn situations around I pray. Let this place be a portal from here to heaven. Just like Jacob experienced a ladder experience from, from earth to heaven and from heaven to earth. We thank you that your word will not come back void. It will accomplish what pleases you. It will prosper where it's sent. So I send the word to everyone listening under the sound of my voice on ground and online. Do what you want to do this morning. Heal, deliver, set free. We vow to give you praise, glory, honor, adoration. In Jesus' name. And everybody believing said, Amen. Genesis chapter 12. Begin reading from verse 1, Genesis chapter 12. Begin reading from verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. Abram was seven and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had got gathered and souls that they had gotten in Haran, they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land of the place of Shechem, the, play, the plain of Monre. The Canaanites was then in the land. The Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain to the east of Bethel, pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Haran on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. You can stop right there. He built an altar unto the Lord and he called on the name of the Lord. This morning, I want to talk to you about called on his name or call on his name. Let me put it that way. Call on his name. 
Are you following me now? We are in the book of Genesis uh, 12, and we are looking at the man called Abram. Abram, we know, has been a moon worshiper and has followed after other gods. We know that from Joshua 24, verse 2. The Bible says that he followed after other gods. However, when we come into this particular chapter, we find this man called Abram. God is talking to this man, and he's talking to him, yet he is 75 years old. What am I saying? You're never too old to get in the will of God. I said you're never too old to get in the will of God. He's talking to this man and he's 75 years old. This man has no knowledge as to who God is. So God is talking to him and educating him and, and revealing himself to him. Another, another, another word to use is God has manifested himself to this man called Abram. Abram, Abram begins to hear things that he has never heard before. God says, get out of your country, from your kindred, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And you follow me now. He says, I'm going to make of you a great nation. I'm going to bless you and you will be a blessing. I will bless those that bless you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What a big, what a big vision. What a big word to say to this little man. What an awesome thing to say to this man that really doesn't even know who God is. Then the Bible says he leaves there and he begins his journey. The reason why Abraham could leave at such an old age was because he heard the voice of God. If you have not heard the voice of God, you cannot leave. I said, if you have not heard the voice of God, you cannot leave. It is futile to leave if you didn't hear the voice of God. Somebody said, well, pastor, I'm living, this, I'm living this state. Well, did you hear the voice of God? Pastor, I'm leaving this job. Well, did you hear the voice of God? Pastor, I, I'm, I'm leaving this career. Well, did you hear the voice of God? Because if you don't hear the voice of God, you cannot leave. So Abraham here, he is leaving, and the Bible says that he's leaving for a place that God will show him. What does that mean? It means that God shows you more as you go along than when you first started. In other words, if you've asked Abraham, where are you going, he would have told you, I don't know, but I've got to go. Are you following me this morning? But God shows you more as you go along than when you first started. And so it is, Abraham is on his journey, and the Bible says he's on his journey, and God appears to him again and begins to speak to him. He says, I'm going to do awesome things in your life. I'm going to give you this land. I'm gonna, he says, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm going to give this land not only to you, but also to your seed. Now, that's one thing to say to a man that, that, that is maybe 40 years old or 30 years old. But to say to a man 75 years old that he was going to have a seed and he knows that his wife is barren, that's a tall other. Are you following me now? He knows his wife is barren. For 75 years, they've been trying to have children and they could not. And Abraham has now settled as the fact that I'm going to be childless. But God interrupts this man and he says, no, you are not going to be childless. I'm going to give you a seed. Are you following me now? God has a way of saying the impossible. I say God has a way of saying the impossible. But he doesn't only say it, he also does it. I say he doesn't only say it, he also does it. He speaks to you and says, I'm going to heal your body. And it looks ridiculous. It looks futile. It looks like it's crazy. But how many people know that God is used to saying some crazy things? Are you following me now? He says to Joshua, walk around the wall seven times. Walk around the same wall that same day seven more times. And shout. And when you shout, the wall will come down. That sounds crazy. 
It sounds ridiculous. But, but, but Joshua did it, and Joshua did not only hear the ridiculous, he saw the miraculous. What am I saying? If you're ready, if you're ready to hear the ridiculous, you're going to see the miraculous. Are you following me this morning? Somebody look at your neighbor for the first time and tell him, I'm going to see, I'm going to hear the I'm going to hear the ridiculous, but I'm going to see the miraculous. Tell him, I'm going to hear the ridiculous, but I'm going to see the miraculous. And so it is, this man, this man is hearing that he's going to have a, he's going to have a child at 75 years old. A child. At 75 years old, 75 years old, you ought to be a, you ought to be a grand, a grandparent at 75 years old. Not a parent, a grandparent at 75 years old. He said, I'm going to make you a, I'm going to make you a, 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 a parent at 75 years old. Then the Bible says, because I've really preached all of these things, I've, I've preached, I've talked to, I've, I've spoken to you about hearing the voice of God. I've given you nine ways to hear the voice of God. I can't go back and preach that. So, 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 so go to YouTube and just re-preach that and just re-educate yourself on that. Are you following me? I, I, I spoke to you about guidance that you need, that if you're going to go anywhere, if you're going to go any, anywhere in 2023, you need to be guided. You've got to be guided. So you can't just be, you can't just try to wing it no more. Uh, are you following me now? You can't just shoot the breeze no more. Are you following? You've got to be guided. Amen. Then we talked about, we talked about, uh, we talked about service. About service. That you've got to learn how to, that Abraham was a man of what? Of service. Yes, yes. Then we talked about, we talked about th that before service, you have to know what the, what the will of God is, what the will of God is, because really faith begins where the will of God is known. If you don't have any, if you don't know what the will of God is, faith cannot take you far, because faith begins where the will of God is known. Then we talked about be building an altar. Building an altar. We talked about the altar signifies a place of consecration. A place of what? Consecration. We said the altar signifies a place of, um, a, a place of sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We said, we said building an altar also is a place of the slaughter. The slaughter. Slaughter means something has to die. Yeah. We got too many people that are too alive. What am I saying? Your flesh is too alive. It's too much you. You're too much you. Too much what I want. Too much, too much what I want to do. Too much, well, well, how about me? Too, too much, how come they're not thinking about me? How come they're talking about, there's too much you. You're, Paul, says, Paul says it this way, I die daily. I die daily. Some of you got to die. You got too much. You got too much of you. Ain't no room for God because there's too much of you. Are you following me now? You, 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 you got to die to self. You got to die to self. We said, we said that uh, the place of the altar is the place where you, where you experience extraordinary encounters. Extraordinary encounters. The, the place of the altar is where you experience extraordinary encounters. It's also a place where, where, you, where, where you are endowed with uh, an empowerment. Empowerment. So, you, 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 for, so, so, so number one, you, you have extraordinary encounter. Number two, you have entrustment and entrustment empowerment. And number three, we have the essence of his presence. The essence of what? His presence. So in the place of the altar is a place where I, I have an encounter with God. Are you following me now? Not only does it celebrate an encounter, but it also invokes an encounter. Are you following me now? Otherwise, when I build an altar... Not only am I, not only am I uh, 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 celebrating the encounter I've just had with God, but building an altar also invokes an encounter. The first time we see somebody building an altar in the Bible is Noah in Genesis 8 verse 20. The Bible says Noah builds an altar. Are you following me now? He builds an altar and he sacrifices on the altar. When he sacrifices on the altar, the Bible says God came down 
and smelled a sweet smelling savor. And God began to speak. He says, I will not again destroy the earth with water. As long as the earth remains, seed time on harvest, summer and winter, day and night, what shall not cease. That came as a result of Noah invoking the presence of God by way of the altar. You follow me now? And so we said, we said now, we said that many, 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 many times in the Bible we see this idea of building an altar. It's a place of consecration, a place of the slaughter, and a place of sacrifice. Are you following me now? We said that, 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 that Abraham, Abraham built an altar in Genesis 12 verse 7. He built an altar. In Genesis 12, verse 8, he also does what? He builds another altar. In, in, in Genesis 13 and verse 4, what does he do? He builds an altar. In Genesis 13 and verse, uh, and verse, uh, and verse 18, he does what? He builds another altar. So we have this nuance of this man called Abraham not going too far without building an altar. Are you following me now? Now, in our day, building an altar is the idea of prayer and fasting. Prayer and what? And fasting. Now, now the Bible says in Joel, in Joel chapter, chapter, chapter 1, Joel 1 and verse 14. I want you to see this. Joel 1 and what? And verse 14. We'll read this out of the, for those of us that have digital devices, we'll read this out of the, um, huh, the, the New King James Version. The New King James Version. 1 verse 14. See what it says. It says, Consecrate what? Consecrate what? A fast. Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out what? To the Lord. Let's skip down. Go to, go to chapter 2. Chapter 2 and look at verse. Chapter 2 and look at... Um, Look at verse 12, chapter 2, verse 12, and read on down. 12, it says this. It says, even yet, even, it says, yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me as with all your heart, with what? With fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and ran, ran your heart and not your garment. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow the anger and abide, abounding in what? In steadfast love. He relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. A grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Do what? Consecrate a fast. So the idea of building an altar is the idea of being, of being consecrated. It's the idea of the fast. Are you following me now? Now, not only does he, not only does he consecrate or build an altar, but the Bible says this. He calls on what? On the name, what? Of the Lord. He called... On the name of the Lord. Because there's no sense in fasting without calling, on, without calling on the name of the Lord. Are you following me now? He calls on the name of the Lord. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 18 and verse 10. It says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and what? And are saved. The Bible says in Romans, Romans, Romans 10, it says, 
whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, Romans 10 verse 13, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, what happens? Shall be saved. And so this morning we're going to talk about calling on the name. Calling on what? On the name. The first time we see somebody calling on the name is in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 26. It's by way of after Cain had killed his brother Abel. Cain killed Abel out of jealousy, out of, out of, mis, out of, out of misguided, uh, uh, um, misguided uh, 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 passion and he kills his brother. And the Bible says, the Bible says that now Adam knew Eve again and gives birth to Seth. And Seth gives birth to Enos. And the Bible says when Enos was born in Genesis 4 verse 26, men began to call on the name of the Lord. They began to call. Why? Because the, the race of Cain had taken over and there had been total violence and there had been sin rising in a rampant. But the Bible says men began to call on the name of the Lord. What am I saying? I'm saying we've got to call on the name of the Lord. Are you following me now? We have to call on the name of the Lord. The calling on the name of the Lord is the idea of prayer. Of prayer. That when I go to prayer, I'm calling on the name of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, and let's go there, to in, in, in John chapter, chapter 14. Let's go there. John 14. Bible says that Abraham built an altar. And did what? And he called on the name of the Lord. I said, Abraham did what? He built an altar. And what did he do? He called on the name of the Lord. On, on the name of the Lord. Look at your neighbor for the second time. Tell him that you've got to call on his name. You've got to call on his name. You've got to call on his name. I don't know what you're doing, but, but you've got to call on his name. You, you've got to call on, because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is a true. Don't, don't get it twisted. The name of the Lord is a, is, a strong, is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And what happens? They are safe, secured, removed from danger. Now, see what it says. See what it says. See what it says. In John 14, John chapter 14, and see what it says. In verse 13, it says, it says, whatsoever you shall ask, what? In my name, whatsoever you shall ask, where? In my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So when I call on his name, when I call on his name, I've got to call using his name. Did that make sense? When I call on his name, prayer, I've got to use his name when I call on his name. Now, goes on, go, look, look what it says. It says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, what part of that don't you understand? What part of that don't you understand? If you, notice what it says. It says, it says, it says, if, it says, if you, it says, if you ask anything. Now, the anything is according to his will. If you ask anything, we can put it this way. If you ask anything according to his will, I will do what? Do it. So the, the answer is, the question rather is, is healing according to his will? Mm -hmm. I said, is healing according to his will? The answer is yes. Are you following me now? Is soundness of mind according to his will? Yes. 
is deliverance according to his will. Yes. Is prosperity according to his will. Yes. So if I ask anything according to what? His will. He says, I will do it. Now, understand this. Notice what it says. It says, in, 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 skip on to, another, to, to the next chapter. In, um, in, in chapter 16, well, let's look at, excuse me, let's look at, let's look at verse 15. John 15 and verse 7. John 15, then we're going to John 16. We're going to go to John 16 and verse 23. But let's look at, let's look at 15 since 15 is on our way to 16. Ain't that right? I says 15 is on our way to 16. Amen. Look at, look at what it says in 15. It says this. It says, if you abide in me. Hmm? If you remain in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be do, it shall be what? It shall be done what unto you. Are you following me now? If you what? If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be. Might be 50-50. No, 70-30. Huh? It shall be. Folks, what am I saying? Many times we fail to take the word as at face value. We try to, we keep adding stuff to it. Take it at what? At face value. If he says, if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me, then I know he hears me. If he says, if he says, if I ask anything according to his will, he will do it. I know he will do it. Are you following me now? Notice what it says. Notice. Let's, let's go to, let's go to uh, uh, John, John 16, John 16, and verse 24. See what it says. Hitherto. Hitherto means until now. Hitherto, until now, you've asked, you've asked nothing in my name. Hmm? Ask and you shall receive what? That your joy might be full. Have you asked about it? I know, I know you've complained about it, but my question is, is, have you asked about it? I know you're fussed about it, but my question is, have you prayed about it? I know you've told everybody about it, and I know it's irritating you, but my question to you is, have you prayed about it? Because it says, hitherto you've asked nothing in my name. Hmm? Ask and you shall receive what? That your joy may be full. How, how many people w w w can, can attest that if that thing that you're believing God comes to pass in your life, it's going to bring some, some amount of joy. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to bring some amount of joy. Yeah. And so what, what, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to ask according to his will. Are you following me now? And it says, he will do it so that my joy will be full. Now, and so the idea is, what am I doing? And how often am I supposed to do this? The Bible tells you and I, in, uh, in Luke 18, verse 1, it says this. Men always ought to pray and not faint. Always. Always. Somebody say always. Ways. Maybe, maybe because, maybe the reason why we haven't received anything is because we're sometimes, yeah, 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 sometimes praying and sometimes complaining and sometimes fussing Are you, and sometimes cutting. Are you following me now? So you, you, you're all over the place. You follow me now. And so because you're not always praying, maybe that's why you haven't received. Then it goes on to say, it says in 1 first, first Thessalonians 5, verse 17, it says this, pray what? Without ceasing. You got to pray what? Without ceasing. Yeah. Yeah. It means I got to pray all the time. It means I have to have an attitude of gratitude all the time. An attitude of prayer. Hmm? 
Then it says in, um, in, 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 in Ephesians 6 verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying what? Always. 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 With all prayers and supplication. What? In the spirit. Amen. In the spirit. You know, if you're in the spirit, it'll be hard for you to get in the flesh. You got to make yourself get in the flesh. Hmm? And, and if you're in the spirit, you're almost in a zone. Almost in, in a zone. I was looking over my, 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 message, my message yesterday. I said, I'm in the zone. I ain't got to spend too much time on this. I'm in the zone. I've been living in the zone for 21 days. So I, got, I, don't, have to spend all, I don't have to spend all day in this. I'm in a zone. Are you following me now? Then in, uh, then in, um, in Colossians 4, verse 2, it says this. It says, continue in, continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Then it says, and watch. So you're praying and watching. You're praying and watching with thanksgiving. Hmm? So you're praying, you're watching, and you're thanking God. Thanking God. And so that's, that's, that's what we're going to do, especially on this 21 days of that we are ending right now. We're going to spend our time uh, thanking God. Thanking God. Yeah, you say, Pastor, I haven't seen it manifest yet. Yeah, you may have not seen it manifest in, the, in physical form, but in your spirit, you ought to have received it. I said, in your spirit, you ought to have received it. Because the Bible says, it says, it says, it says, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it. Believe that you receive it. You can believe it now. You can't wait for it to show up for you to, for you to get it. Are you following me now? You've got to believe it what? Right now. Right now when you pray. Whatever you desire when you pray. Matthew 11 verse 24. Believe that you receive them. And what happens? You shall have them. Yeah, you got you to gotta believe that you have it now. And so because you believe that you have it now, you ought to be in a, in a state of what? Thanksgiving. 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 What a thought. Thanksgiving. That I'm not going to spend my time asking God what I've already asked God. Because if I asked him and I know he heard me and he's not hard of hearing, Bible says that his ears is not hard that he cannot hear us. His head is not short that he cannot save us. But it says our iniquities. And because you're not in no iniquity no more, well, guess what? He hears you. Bible says his ears are open to the prayer of the righteous. So he heard you. He heard you. Are you following me now? And so I got to be in a state of what? Of thanksgiving. 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 Thanksgiving comes from the idea of two Greek words. Two Greek words in one. It is number one, grace. Grace. Number two is homologio. Homologio means, it means to confess or to acknowledge. Those two words make up thanksgiving in the Greek. Number one is grace. Somebody say grace. 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 Yeah. Number two is to acknowledge. Somebody say to acknowledge. to acknowledge. Yeah. And so when I'm thanking God, thank, thanking God, it means, it means I have a verbal expression of the grace of God. A verbal expression. That's what Thanksgiving is. It's a verbal expression of the grace of God in my life. Yeah, yeah, a verbal expression. And so, and so, 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 so why am I, why am I thanking God? I'll give you, 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 I'll give you six, six reasons why you're, why you're thanking God. Six reasons. Number one, number one is because you owe God thanksgiving. I owe, I owe God thanksgiving. Psalm 50 verse 14 says, offer to, offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And pay your, pay your vows to the Most High. 
Are you following me now? I owe him thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Number two, number two, number two, number two, number two, very quickly. It, number two is because it, I, I'm thanking God because what, I, what I'm thanking God for what I've received. For what I've received. For what he's given me. That's why I'm thanking him. Yeah, for what I've for health, for strength, for sight. Are you far? Many times we're looking at what's not working instead of thanking God for what is working. I, I, you follow me now? Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, I may not, my legs may not be working right, but I got two hands that work right. Are you following me now? Are you listening to me? I, I, my, my eyes may be blind in one eye, but I got a good eye. I got one good eye. You ought to give God praise for what is working. What is working? What is working? Are you following me now? Number, 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 number three, number three, for the victories. Now, number four, number four, for what you have received. You can go to 1 first, Corinthians 4, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 7. John 3, verse 27. John 3, 27, and 1 Corinthians 4, 7. John 3, 27 says, it says, no man can receive anything except it, for, except it be given to him from above. Yeah, no man can receive anything except it be given to him, what, from above. Then 1 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says this, it says, it says it this way. It says, what did you have that God didn't give you? So if he gave it to you, why are you boasting? Why are you, why are you may like it like you, you were the one that manufactured it, manufactured it? Are you following me? What do you have that God didn't give you? Hmm? Your smarts, God gave it to you. Your looks, God gave it to you. Your hands, God gave it to you. Your brains, God gave it to you. What do you have that God didn't give to you? If he gave to you, why are you acting like you, you are the one that manufactured it all by yourself? Are you following me this morning? Number, 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 number four. Number four, for the victories we enjoy. Or, or number three, for the victories we enjoy, for the victory, we're, we're thanking God for the, for the victories we enjoy. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 4, thanks be unto God, which always gives us the victory. Always gives you the victory. Every victory that you've won is because of God. I said every victory that you've won, you and I have won, is because of God. And so I've got to thank him. Are you following me now? This is the idea. The idea of building an altar is the idea of thanksgiving. The idea of prayer. Are you following me now? Okay, number, number, number four, number four, number four. Why are you thanking God? Because it multiplies the blessing in your life. It does what? It multiplies the, be the blessing in your life. The Bible says in John 6, 11, that, that he took, he took the, the not enough. And did what? He gave thanks. And he released it. When he gave thanks and released it, what happened? It began to multiply. Hmm? Thanksgiving multiplied the blessing in your life. God, I may not have that four-bedroom house right now. But I praise God for this apartment. I thank God for where I am right now. I give God praise that my bills are paid in this little bitty apartment. Are you following me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you thank God for the little, he has a way of taking the little and making the little more than enough. Number, number, number what? Number, number, number five, number five. W why do I thank God? Because it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Somebody say a good thing. It's a good thing. Psalm 92 verse 1, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing of his praises. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to his name. Are you following me now? It's a good thing. It's a good thing. And number six, and number six, and number six, why do I praise God? Because he is good. Hmm? I said, why do I praise God? Because he's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Psalm 107 verse 1, it says, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Mm? Not because, not, not simply because he's good. That's why I thank him. Mm? Mm? So, 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 so on Monday, I thank him because he's good. 
On Tuesday, I thank him. Why? Because he's good. On Wednesday, I thank him. Why? Because he's good. On Thursday, I go around, I go, around, I, I circle back and I thank him. Why? Because he's good. On Friday, I'm going to thank him because he's good. On Saturday, I'm going to give him praise because he's good. And on Sunday, I'm going to turn around and also give him praise because he's good. Simply because he's good. And so this idea of prayer and calling upon the name of the Lord is the idea of thanksgiving. It's the idea of understanding. I've got to, I have to have an attitude of prayer, a lifestyle of prayer. The Bible says this in John chapter 1, in 1 John 4 verse 17. 1 John 4 17 says it, says it this way. It says, as he is, so are you and I in this world. As he is. As what? As he is. And so how was Jesus? Hmm? How was Jesus? Well, Jesus was a man of prayer. Hmm? I, I said, if you're going to, there's no, there's no point in building an altar if you're not going to call on his name. I said, there's no point in building an altar if you and I are not going to call on his name. Now, so the idea is that Jesus was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. Every time you saw Jesus, he was either leaving prayer or going to prayer. Hmm? I'll give you a couple, couple, couple of, uh, of, of verses. In, for, in, in, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 35, it says, He rose up early in the morning and he found a secluded place and did what? And he prayed. Matter of fact, the Bible says he rose up before everybody else, a great way before daybreak. Some of y'all can't... can't that, that, that. <laughs> now, Jesus, you got that one. I, I'm a new, new time prayer. Uh, but, but that's, you know, I don't, think it was the, I don't think it was necessarily the time. Or it, I think it was just, just that he, he, could, he could be un, uninterrupted at that time. Are you following me now? Yeah. An un, uninterrupted time. No, there's not a whole lot of traffic. Yeah. Yeah, you, you gotta learn. You gotta learn how to how, how to get get ahead of the traffic. Somebody keep, keep people keep talking about. Well, well, well you know, I, I would be early, uh, but traffic. Well, get ahead of traffic. Get ahead of traffic. Are you following me now? I'm late. You know, I'm late because of traffic. Well, get your 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 your, your okay. <laughs> Get your, are you, are you far to get yourself up? I'm going to use some, you know, praise the Lord. Let me, sweet lips, sweet lips, sweet lips. Get your behind up. Are you following me now? And get ahead of traffic. Get ahead of traffic. Amen. Praise God. And so he rose up early before traffic happened and he began to pray. Hmm? Then we find him in, in Luke chapter 4, no, excuse me, Luke, Luke chapter 3, first of all. We find him that before he was, before, before he was baptized or as he was baptized in Luke, in Luke chapter 3 verse 21, guess what he was doing? He was praying. Hmm? Praying. Then in Luke chapter 4 verse 14, the Bible says after he had prayed for 40 days and 40 nights, guess what, after he, was pray, he had prayed for 40 days and 40 nights, he returned in the power of the Spirit. But guess what he was doing? He was praying. Then in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16, the Bible says he withdrew himself into the wilderness and did what? And he prayed. And he prayed all night long before he chose the 12 disciples. Before he made a major decision, guess what he was doing? He was praying. Some of us, we just make, we just make all kinds of decisions without praying. And we wonder why. All kinds of decisions. Hmm? Did you pray about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you pray about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Did you actually pray about it? And so now, so when I say, did you pray about it? Because people say, well, well, I, I said something. Well, just because you said something don't mean, don't mean that's prayer. 
Because prayer is not complete until you've heard back from who you've spoken to. Hmm? I say prayer is not complete until you've heard back from who you're talking to. It's like me having a one-way conversation with somebody in Japan. And he's not even saying nothing. And I hang up the phone. I, I just picked up the phone, hello, and told him everything I wanted to tell him. He, he, did, he, did, not, he did not acknowledge that he heard my, my call. He didn't acknowledge that he's picked up the call. Are you following? He didn't, he didn't acknowledge that he's him on the other end of the call. I just simply just rattle off some things and hang. And after, after five minutes of me just saying all that I want to say, I hung up the phone. Well, is that prayer? No. No. Prayer is not complete until you've heard back from the one you're speaking with or speaking to. Let me say it this way. Prayer is not, it's not trying to get God to do something for you. Are you following me now? Prayer is not the time you spend, uh, quote unquote, on your knees. Are you following me now? Prayer is communication with God. There is an exchange. It's God talking to you and you talking to God. Are you following me now? And we gave you nine ways that God can speak to you. So you're not over here waiting for an audible voice when God wants to lead you or speak to you a different way. Are you following me now? Okay, 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 okay. Then we see God. Then we see Jesus. We see him in Luke chapter, chapter 6 verse, verse 11. The Bible says he prayed all night. Hmm? I said he prayed what? All night. All night. Now, if Jesus can pray all night, I best say that you can at least go half a night. Are you following me now? He prayed what? All night. Then the Bible says in, um, in Luke chapter 9, verse, oh, this is in Luke. You, what am I saying? You can't go several chapters without finding Jesus praying. What are you doing? He's calling. Upon the name. Hmm? Are you following me? So our, 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 our mindset is we're going to build an altar fast, but we're going to call upon the name. Hmm? Because the Bible says there's no other name. What? There's no other name above, above his name. Are you following me now? Talk about in Philippians, in Philippians 2 and, and verse uh, somewhere around 10 and 15 on down. Talks about that, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, what? Is Lord. Okay, now, now, now. And so let's define what prayer, let's bring some kind of definition so you understand what I'm talking when, when I say prayer. Hmm? Then we're going to talk about the importance of prayer. Is that all right? I'll give you seven, seven, reason why, seven reasons why prayer is important. Seven reasons why prayer is, is important. Then I'll give you eight reasons why fasting, uh, when to fast. Then we'll be done. Is that okay? Okay, we'll do this very quickly. All right. Prayer, prayer, prayer is, is, is prayer. Ah, prayer is cooperating with the supernatural to accomplish his will on the earth. Prayer is cooperating with the supernatural to accomplish his will on the earth. P prayer is, is acknowledging an end of your ability and embracing the supernatural power of God. Prayer is how we enforce the, the agenda of God on the earth. Prayer invokes an earthly license for heavenly interference. Hmm? Prayer is a legal activity that gives heaven the warrant to invade the earth. I'm giving you these definitions purposely. Because I want you to see that this is a legal transaction. A legal. Are you following me now? Legal. That means 
uh, that means I've got to initiate it. Hmm? I've got to initiate. That's why he said this. He says in John 6 verse 6, he says, when you pray. Then in Luke 11 verse 1, they said to Jesus, teach us to pray. Hmm? Then in, 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 in Matthew, which is also in, which, which is Matthew 6, which is also in, in, in Luke 11, he says, when you pray, say, our Father, which art heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Will is a legal term. A will. When somebody dies, what happens? They read his wheel. That's what it is. This is his wheel. Are you following me? He's dead, so this is what? His wheel. But he didn't just stay dead. He rose up again from the dead to enforce his wheel. Yeah, because you know how somebody, some folks died and then folks go in there and they, they, they take his wheel and sometimes they, they alter the wheel. No, 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 no. He got up. He, he got up to make sure, yeah, that his will was going to be enforced. Hmm? Are you following me now? Okay, okay. I've got to go. I've got to go. So let me give you real, very quickly. Let me let me give you very very quickly. Uh, let me give you. Um, <sighs> I'm going to give you seven 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 reasons or or seven importance of praying. importance of prayer seven importance of prayer number one prayer helps you see yourself more clearly <laughs> I said prayer helps you to see yourself more clearly yeah you begin to pray God will begin to talk to you and he begin to tell you things that nobody well maybe somebody could have told you but you won't listen to him hmm Hmm? He'll tell you, you're rebellion. Hmm? He, he'll, he'll tell you, uh, you got false humility. Hmm? He'll tell you, you're jealous. Hmm? He'll tell you, he'll tell you, you got unforgiveness in your heart. Are you following me now? When in Isaiah 6, 1, when Isaiah was in place of prayer, he says, woe is me, God. Hmm? Now, sometimes he'll come to you and tell you, based on what you've done, I'm pleased with you. Hmm? Yeah, I'm pleased with you. I, I like how you handle that. I, I've had, had God say that. I like, I like how you handle that. Yeah. But sometimes they say, you, you're a prideful, you prideful little one. You're prideful. Are you following me now? So prayer helps you see yourself more clearly. Number two, when you, when you, when you pray, stuff or flesh falls off of you. Flesh. Somebody say flesh. flesh. Yeah, flesh. Y'all know flesh? Yeah, flesh. I want to cuss him out. I want to cut him out. Are you following? I want to give him a piece of my mind. That's flesh. Yeah, I want to get him back. That's flesh. Or get her back. I, I, wanna, I, want, I, I, want, I want them to jump off the cliff. Amen. Don't come. Are you? That's flesh. Flesh. Somebody say flesh. Yeah, flesh feels good when it's manifesting itself. Yeah, it feels very good. But, 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 but you know, you, you know it's not of God. Galatians 5 tells you. It, it's flesh. Amen. But when you, when you pray, what happens? Flesh falls off of you. Are you following me now? And you find that in, uh, you find Psalm 68 verse 2. Uh, uh, yeah, Psalm 68 verse 2. Uh, uh, number 3, number 3, number 3. Uh, when, you, when you pray, when you pray, you, 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 you enjoy the presence of God. What happens? You enjoy the presence of God when you pray. What happens? You enjoy the presence of God. Psalm, Psalm 16 verse 11, it says, In the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. Yeah, so a telltale sign that somebody has not been in the place of prayer is when they're depressed. 
There's no way you can be depressed if you're in the presence of God. So how you gonna be? How you gonna be depressed? And you you just left you just left the throne of, the throne room of God, where in His presence there's fullness of joy. At His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Are you following me now? What am I saying? When, when you pray, it not only helps you spiritually, it helps you psychologically and, biologi and, and biologically. Are you following me now? All that, you will have to pay and to go to psych psychiatrists. No, not, nothing wrong with those guys. Praise God. But I can get my help in prayer. I said I can get my help in prayer. Amen. Okay. Okay, I heard somebody say, well, well, Pastor, some folks are just crazy. They just need, okay, well, well, God can help crazy folk too, you know? Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 let's do this, let's do this. Num number, number what? Number four, number four, number four. When you pray, it reveals the plan of God for your life. What, what happens? It reveals the plan of God for your life, the plan of God. For your life. He shows you. The, notice he says in, in Isaiah 48 verse 16 and to 13. Talks about he's going, he says he's going to teach you and show you the way that you ought to go. He will guide you with his eyes and stuff. All that, all that good things. Amen. I got, to, I got to hurry up. Number four. Number four. Number, number, excuse me. Number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. When you pray, he, he makes life simpler. 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 Oh, let me put it this way. When you pray, he gives you a stress-free life. Somebody says stress-free. Yes, yeah, st stress-free. Are you following me now? It says, come unto me in Mark 11 verse 24, and I will give you rest. Hmm? It says, take my yoke upon you because it's easy. Are you following me now? If you got stress in your life, it's because you ain't praying. It's a telltale sign you are praying. Amen. Are you following me now? Okay. Number number what? Num, number 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 six. Number six. Number six. When you pray, when you pray, he shows you what, what you don't know. He shows you what you don't know. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 12, they said this. They said, We don't know what to do. But our eyes are on you. And what happens? When they prayed, he showed them what to do. You say, Pastor, I don't understand math. When you pray, he'll show you what to do. Bible says he gave Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave them wisdom. He gave them skills in science. And, and, and are you following me? He gave it to them. Are you following me now? Okay, I got to go. Number, 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 number what? Number seven, number seven, number seven, number seven. When you pray, when you pray, it recharges you to face anything. Somebody said recharge. Yeah, it, it recharges you to face anything. Yeah. Yeah, the Bible says how how in first in first Samuel thirty verse one it talks talks about how they were they were um, they were trying to stone Samuel, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, trying to stone stone David, and they were trying to stone David. And the Bible says he said, "Bring me a he ephod." Are you following me? They cried and they, they, that they cried that that they could they cried to to a point where they couldn't cry anymore, no answer. So that means crying doesn't crying is not the answer. Hmm? I said crying is what? It's not the answer. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you got that ugly cry. Snot just coming everywhere. Huh? Crying is not the answer. My question is, have you prayed? Have you prayed? David did what? He prayed and God gave him the answer. Hmm? He said, he said, he said, pursue and you shall recover all. What if he didn't pray? They would have been lost forever. They would have been gone forever. What am I saying? Many of us have lost things because we did not pray. Are you following me? Okay, okay. What did I say? Okay, okay. So, so, 
So what am I doing? How am I doing with time? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm way, I'm way, okay, okay. I'm like way, be, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, oh, God. I'm going to give you, ah, okay, okay. Can y'all take, can y'all take just, can y'all take about, about, about nine more things? Nine more things? Is that all right? Nine more? Okay, 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 okay. So, so, so now we've done this idea of prayer, the importance of prayer. And so now I want to give you the importance of fasting and I want to give you the importance of fasting or, or when to fast because we just came off of a fast and I dare say some, some will, will uh, 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 put, they'll now put fasting on a back burner. Amen. And I'm saying, okay, you may do that for a couple of days, but let me tell you the importance or, or when you should fast. Amen. Because, because I'm, I dare say that there, there are going to be times in your life uh, that you're going to have to pick up fasting again. But I want to I want to I want to arm you so you know, okay, when you find the situation that you're in, you know, okay, I, I probably need to couple couple. What am I saying? These are weapons that the believer has at their disposal. That if they don't know they have those weapons, then the enemy can come in and run ramp rampant in your life. But when you know that you have something that is available extra, are you following me now? That can stop the hand of the enemy, then you can always pick it up at any time and whoop on the enemy. Are you following me now? I'll give you nine things real quick. Now, we, we talked about fasting We've, we've given you a definition of fasting. In the Hebrew, it means some. Some means to cover the mouth, to cover the mouth. The Greek means es, nesteo, nesteo, fasting, nesteo. It means to abstain. Somebody abst say abstain. To abstain, to abstain for food. To, abs to, to abstain from food for spiritual purposes. Are you following me now? To cover the mouth and to abstain from food for spiritual purposes. Now, 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 real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. Now, real quickly. When, when, when should I fast? Number one. N number one, when should I fast? When you, are, when you want an answer to your prayer. When you want an answer to your prayer, then you ought to fast. When you're praying and it don't seem like you've got the answer, then you ought to couple your, your prayer with fasting. You find that in S. You find that in S. 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 Ezra, Ezra chapter eight verse twenty one, Ezra eight verse twenty one, Amen. Ezra eight verse twenty one. Number two, number two. I just got to mention and I got to move on. Number two, when you are undertaking a new venture, when you are undertaking what a new venture, you ought to fast because you ain't never been there before. A new venture, you get a promotion, you 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 you're a new business, a new job. Are you for a new city? You ought to fast. You find that in Nehemiah 1 verse 4. You're fasting, you're fasting, you're fasting why? For supernatural favor in that, in that new venture. Supernatural what? Favor. That's why you're fasting. Number, 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 number three, number three, number three. When you're facing a personal attack from the enemy. A personal attack from the enemy. Like you find in like you find in First Samuel chapter one verse eleven, when Penina was personally attacking uh, Hannah, personally attacking her, Hannah, are you following me now? You got to understand that it's time to fast. Hannah fasted, and the Bible says that God God gave her supernatural victory, supernatural childbirth. Why? Because she was being personally attacked. Are you following me now? Number, number four, number four, number four. When you are desiring to know the will of God for your life. When you are desiring to know the will of God for your life. You find that in, um, hmm, in, uh, mm, in Daniel, excuse me, Daniel 9, Daniel 9 and Daniel chapter 10. Daniel 9 and 10, okay, Daniel 9 and verse 10, he, he, was, he got revelation beyond his dispensation because he fasted. Number five, when you are desiring a turnaround, a, when you are desiring a turnaround, a turnaround in your, in your life, desiring what? A turnaround, or another word is a breakthrough, breakthrough in the job, in the marriage, in the relationship, in your finances, you ought to, you ought to pray and fast, Amen. You find that in Joel chapter 2, verse 11 and uh, to, to, to 13. 
Job 2, 11 to 13. Amen. Number six, number six, when you are desiring wisdom and insight from God. Wisdom and insight from God. Wisdom and what? And insight from God. In other words, supernatural sensitivity. I need wisdom concerning this situation. You find that in, uh, in Acts 10 verse 30, Cornelius was praying as he was fasting. God showed up, gave him wisdom, and, and gave him supernatural sensitivity. Number seven, when you need to see clearly as to, as to the direction to take. When you need to see clearly as to the direction to take. Where am I going? What's next, God? What move am I supposed to make? You follow me now. In Acts 13 verse 2, the Bible says as they were praying, the Holy Ghost spoke. They were fasting and praying, and what happened? The Holy Ghost spoke. Number eight, number eight, I've got to hurry, i got to hurry, i got to hurry. Number eight, when you are in major trouble, in major trouble, amen, in major trouble, you need, you need deliverance like yesterday major trouble you need to fast amen you find that in acts in acts 27 verse 33 paul was in a major hurricane a major hurricane amen and the bible says that had they had not eaten the ship was about to be shipwrecked and they had not eaten and what happened bible says that paul began to fast and pray and he says when I, when he fasted and prayed he saw the angel of god appear to him and gave him direction are you following me now and number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine, uh, when you want to gain the victory, to gain the what? The victory. You find in Judges 20 and verse 26 to 28, the people of God, they were fighting the Benjamites and they were fighting them and they lost significant, significantly in battle. What happened? They fasted. So when you want to gain the victory, what happens? I fast. They fasted, and what happened? As they were fasting, the Bible says, when they fasted, God spoke to them and gave them deliverance and told them what he was going to do. And so in Judges 20 and verse 26, 28, the Bible says, they came, he, they gave, he gave them a strategy on how to win. Are you following me now? All these things are available when you and I were fast. And so what am I saying? As we build the altar, am I done? Am I done? Am I done? Did I give you all of them? Did I give you? That's nine, right? That's nine. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, that's nine. Amen. 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 I, I give you a bonus one. You want, want a bo bonus one? Yeah, I give you a bonus one. A bonus one is when you want to show repentance. When you want to show what? Repentance. Yeah. In, 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 uh, in Jonah chapter 3 verse 5, when they were trying to show repentance to God, what happened? They fasted and they prayed. They fasted and they prayed. And everybody, and, and as they were fa fasted and praying, uh, 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 guess what happened? Uh, God, 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 re re God removed the judgment that was, going, that was coming their way because they fasted and prayed by way of repentance. Are you following me now? Amen. And so when you and I begin to couple prayer with fasting, we'll begin to see supernatural things happen in our lives. We can be like Abraham, going from one place and building an altar. And going from another place and do what? Building an altar. What am I saying? I'm, I'm really saying, I'm really saying, I'm really saying this. In, in Matthew 6, the Bible says this. It says, it says, it says, it says, it says, whatever you do in secret, your father would seize in secret. Will do what? Will reward you openly. It says, it says, it says, when you pray, it says, it says, go into, go into your closet. Your closet is your altar. Are you follow me now? Your closet is what is your altar. Yeah, yeah. So I go into, I go into my sick place, my altar. And in my altar, I call on the name of the Lord. And when I call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says that he's a strong tower. As we close, go to, go to 2 Samuel 22. Because I want, you, I, want, I want you to see who you're calling. When we call on the name, we're not just calling on a thing. 
we're not just calling on a deity. We're not just calling on a God. We're calling on the Most High. The one that is above every other God. The Bible says he is the King of Kings. And he is the Lord of Lords. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, I like what David, how David describes who this God is. In 2 Samuel 22, the Bible says in verse 1, And David spake unto the Lord the, the, the words of this song. In the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of, the, his, uh, out of the hand of all his enemies. It's amazing how we get a revelation as to who God is after God has delivered us. Many times we don't see, we don't recognize who God is until God comes in and brings a major breakthrough in our lives. Are you following me now? So after God delivered him out, out from all his enemies, David got this revelation that he had, to, he had to put it in a song and put it down so all of us can see it today. See what David says. David says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I call on the name. I call on the name because it's the name above every other name. I call on the name because he's my rock. I call on his name because he's my fortress. I call on his name because he's my high tower. I call on his name because he's my God. I call on his name because he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. I call on his name because he's the bomb of Gilead. I call on his name because he's the rose of Sharon. I call on his name because he's the ancient of days. I call on his name because he is El Shaddai. I'll call on his name because he's Elohim. I'll call on his name because he is El Shema. I'll call on his name because he is the Almighty. I'll call on his name because he is Jehovah Roha. I'll call on his name because he is Jehovah Mekadish. I'll call on his name because he is Jehovah Shama. I'll call on his name because he is Jehovah Roha. I'll call on his name because he is Jehovah Nisi. I'll call on his name because he's my God. He's my God. He's my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Were you blessed today? Will somebody give God praise and give God glory in the house? Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Father. Are you blessed today? I said, were well, you blessed today? Somebody give God praise and give him glory in the house. Give him praise and give him glory in the house. Give him praise and give him glory in the house. Give him praise and give him glory in the house. Father, we love you today. We give you praise and we give you glory. On this day, we honor you. On this day, we magnify you. On this day, we lift you up, God. We celebrate you for who you are. Thank you for delivering us from danger seen and unseen. Thank you for making a way where there seems to be no way. We give you the praise. We give you glory. 
We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you because you are good. We thank you because you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Yeah, we thank you, God, because it's a good thing to give thanks to his name and to sing of his praises. Father, we thank you, oh God, because, it, because thanksgiving is due unto your name. Oh, we give you the praise. We give you glory. We thank you for everything that we have received today. Every good thing we received comes from heaven. And so we give you the praise for it. We give you the glory. And we give you honor. Great God that you are. Touch your people, I pray. Minister life, strength, breakthrough, deliverance, healing, prosperity, salvation, deliverance. We bless you and we honor you tonight, this morning. And we lift you up for all that you've done. And we thank you for being a mighty good God. We celebrate you and we celebrate your presence. In Jesus' name, somebody give God praise. Come on, give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Give God praise in the house. Amen, amen. God bless you. Amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. For those of us online, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in on today. We just speak God's goodness and God's grace upon you. As you apply these things in your life, we thank God that God will use it to move you from where you are to where you need to be. It's a new day. It's a new day. God bless you. God bless you. And we'll see you again next week. If you want to sow, you know how to you know what to do. Go to creedusga.org. And we believe God will minister and bless you in such a mighty way. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Amen, amen, amen. Praise.